Shalom, and welcome to Via Havta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Are you a thankful person to other people? But most importantly, do you give thanks to God regularly? As you live your life, do you live it with a strong sense of gratitude? We have so much to be thankful for to God. He is our Savior. He provides. He loves us. He is a wonderful God, and it is appropriate to approach Him continuously with thanksgiving. Well, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Psalms and Psalm 100. Now, this is called a song of thanksgiving, or we could use that word mizmor, which is a psalm of thanksgiving. And notice how it opens up, Psalm 100 and verse 1, where it reads, mizmor le a psalm of thanksgiving. Now, we've spoken about that unique word for psalm many times. It's the Hebrew word mizmor. I've shared with you that it comes from a root that has to do with trimming or cutting away things, things that are a hindrance. And let's be honest with ourselves. There are things in my life, and therefore, there are things in your life and all of our lives that are not productive to us spiritually. They are a hindrance. They are not an asset, but they are a liability to us spiritually. And these things can have some physical aspects to them that are also negative. And therefore, we need to rid ourselves of them. But in and of ourselves, we cannot. We need God's help. And being someone who is thankful and gives gratitude to God, these things can have a positive a, a aspect in our life that is helpful. And thanksgiving is just that. It is a tool that brings godly change into our life. It changes who we are and makes us more in the image of our Lord and Savior. So be thankful. Demonstrate gratitude. Now, you might say, yes, as I review my life, I am thankful to God. But do other people see gratitude and thanksgiving to God and to others? Allow this psalm to be a catalyst in your life for changing you and becoming a person that is known as a thankful person. Verse 1 again. A psalm of thanksgiving and then it says to give shout unto the Lord now this word comes from a root which has to do with emotion it has to do with calling attention and therefore he says to be thankful and to do so to demonstrate that in a sincere way in a way that is emotional and here, that concept of emotion is based upon sincerity. It's a true feeling of gratitude. But he says, shout, shout unto the Lord all the earth. And that is a most inclusive way to say everyone should, should do this, that this is beneficial for all of humanity. So give thanks unto the Lord and shout make this publicly known shout unto the lord all the earth verse 2. now when you truly are thankful to god that presupposes a recognition that he is lord he is the sovereign and therefore what ought we do we'll look at verse 2 serve the lord 
with gladness. Now, not just serve him, but be glad that you are his servant and be glad that you are called to do the things that he has called us to do. Because as we serve God, it is going to bring us into fellowship with him. When we walk in God's will, we are walking with the Lord. And when we are thankful to serve God and when we give thanks unto him with joy and gladness that we're called to serve him, it is also going to have a positive outcome in our being. Serving God with gladness is going to bring about a positive outcome in our spirituality. It is going to have an impact in making us and shaping us and forming us as God would have us to be. So look again at verse 2. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before him with. And there's another word. We talked about this phrase to shout. Well, this is a synonym for that same idea of shouting. Many Bibles will say shout with joy. Whether that word contains joy or not, uh, scholars debate, but it's certainly a word of emotion. So it's similar in calling public attention to the fact that you belong to God, that you serve God, and that you are going to be faithful to God. He says, serve the Lord with gladness and come before him with shout. Now, understand the relationship between this second verse with the first half and the second half. What it's telling us, and I made reference to this as we began verse 2, serving the Lord, what's going to be the outcome when you serve him with gladness? Well, it says, come before him. It is that faithful service to God with gladness that is going to be viewed by God in a way that he's going to invite you into his presence. That's why it says, comes before him with a shout. So as we are faithful in serving God with gladness, it is going to bring us to know God, experience God, and that is going to give rise to us being changed and someone who expresses publicly with that shout, our, our happiness that we are known by him and that we are called into his presence. Now look at verse 3. Know that the Lord, he is God. Being in his presence, we are going to, to deepen our knowledge of God and we are going to know God as the God. And that word, the God, Ha Elohim, refers to God as judge. Now, in my experience, people will talk many times about God. There are many names, and these names reveal character and attributes of God. But the thing that should stand out, that word Elohim, most people are familiar with it, heard it now and then. That term Elohim relates to God in the most general way, and it's related to the concept of judge. So do you acknowledge and does your life reflect that acknowledgement that he is judge? I've shared with you that the name Daniel means God is my judge. It's a different word, that word Dayan for judge. Realize, first and foremost, we are all going to be judged by God according to his standards and his standards are revealed through his commandments. The commandments are God's expectations for his people, how God expects us to order our life. And we order our life based upon his revelation. So we see God as judge. Look at verse, verse 3 again. Know that the Lord, he is the God, he is judge, and he has made us and not ourselves. We don't make ourselves. We are the, the outcome of God's creative work. Now, realize we have been stained and affected adversely by sin. And the only one that can restore us and put us back in the proper order is God. And it's when, and here's an important principle, it is when I take 
the revelation of God and apply it to my life that God by means of his Holy Spirit so we're talking to believers only this is only going to be the outcome for one who is in a new covenant relationship with God but as we take God's revelation and apply it to our life that obedience to his word is going to work itself out in our life bringing about change as i submit to the word of god god is going to go to work in me to change me and conform me into the person that he wants me to be now one of the things that we should pray to god for is knowledge knowledge god How do you want me to live? What are the decisions that you would have me to make? And how do I carry out those decisions in a way that are rooted in wisdom and also reflect your character, your attributes, your way in my life? When we approach life in that way, we are going to be given a different perspective we are going to have access to his provision and that God is going to mold us and shape us but it's only in his presence in his will doing his work and agreeing with his word is God going to go to work and change us and make us into the people that he has called for us to be and that his son has died for us to become so look again at the second part of verse 3 where it says who asanu he has made us and not ourselves his people and the implication is because he has made us we belong to him we are his people and the flock of of his pasture so god he is leading us the image here is of a shepherd when he says we are the flock of his pasture we are sheep he is the shepherd we need to hear his voice and respond and the implication is foundationally is that we want to follow him as we saw in psalm 23 he is going to lead us into good locations the places of his provision the places of his presence the places of his power and when we are in that right location we are going to see things correctly when I'm out of God's will let me say that differently when I am doing what I want to do when I am ruling my life I am inviting deceit into my life and I will be deceived I will have my life darken when you are in the dark you can't see things correctly you're just uh, kind of groping around for for clues on where you are and and signs and clues to to behave and it's obscure we need to step into the light what does that mean step into truth what does that mean obey the instructions of god when we are obeying his word we are going to see things truthfully that is we're going to see things from his perspective so we are who his people the sheep of his pastor look at verse 4 come and the implication is come through his gates with thanksgiving now this is the second time we've seen that word toda being revealed in this psalm come through his gates meaning we want to approach him and these gates are synonymous with worship we enter into the gates with thanksgiving in order that we might worship him now foundationally worship involves recognizing god and and giving thanks and gratitude unto him and a wise thing to do daily is to think and reflect and god will begin to reveal things to you what he has done his provision his help his assistance and you are going to find that there are many things on a daily basis that you can be thankful for to god sometimes we're living our life and we have concerns maybe this will happen maybe that's going to happen and we find that oftentimes they don't happen and that is an outcome of god's providential care in our life 
that he has moved, that he has acted. And realize something. We don't serve a passive God. We serve an active God, and he's active if we are in a new covenant relationship with him. He is active in our lives. He is moving, whether he personally or through his angels or through his spirit, God is actively involved in our life. We are not a victim of simply time and chance. Now, time and chance can affect all of us, but through obedience, through a commitment to the will of God, the purposes of God, his revelation, his truth, what happens? It will limit time and chance happening to us. We are going to be people under his leadership, and he is going to prepare us for the future. And he is going to be our defense. He is going to be all things unto us. And that's why he says here, uh, come through his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So we see here, this is poetry, Hebrew poetry. What's parallel? Well, what's parallel is his gates and his courtyards. Also with thanksgiving and with praise so we need to thank god for what he has done and we praise god for who he is now we also praise him for what he has done but this word tihila for praise frequently not always but frequently it is a word that appears in regard to god and him being god his identity his nature his will so we praise him for who he is. God is worthy of praise and thanksgiving. He doesn't have to do anything in order that we praise him. The fact that he is God, it means that we as his creation, or as it says earlier, his people, the sheep of his pastor, we should give him praise. And again, think about things in your life on a daily basis that you can give God sincere praise for. Praising God, again, is going to impact us. When you make a a commitment to spend 5, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, simply acknowledging God, thanking Him, and praising Him, that time that you invest in praising Him is going to pay multiple dividends because praising God is going to bring you into his presence and when you are with him you are going to be transformed you are going to be changed by his presence so again come through his gates with thanksgiving his courtyards with with praise give thanks to him and bless his name now we see different words give thanks give praise and here bless his name now what does that mean that term to bless his name implies that you have knowledge of god's character and this is something in my opinion that's being obscured today so much of worship the songs that people want to worship god with and many of the things that are being taught today They don't focus in on his character. And here's the the sad thing. When we don't understand the character of God, we're not going to be like God and we're called to be like him. We never become divine. We don't become little gods. All of that, as you know, is heresy. It's false. But we are called to be like him. What does that mean? That we behave according to his will. We want to do the things that God would do or that he would desire to be done. We want to participate with him. And first and foremost, we should be on an exploration of discovering God. What does that mean? You say, why know God? Yes, you do through that grace of God, through that gospel. You know God, but God, is he he small? No, he is not. He is large and our entire life in fact eternity is not enough time in order that we would discover who god is 
in that full sense. So we are on a journey of exploring God, exploring God, and knowing more and more of his character. Why? Why is it incumbent upon us to know the character of God? Because we want to be like him. And we want to take his character and make it ours. This is part of acknowledging God and submitting to God. So it says here, look at the end of of verse 4. Give thanks to him. How do I show thanksgiving to God? I bless his character. And that is, God, I bless you that you are righteous, that you are holy, that you are a pure God, that you are a good God. We go through scripture and we find more and more adjectives that define God, these words, and research these words. What a well use of time. Research these words that you come up with in regard to the character of God. See how they're used throughout the scripture. If you were to ask me, what is one of the most valuable tools for studying the word of God it would be a concordance. And one of the best use of your times is word studies to see how these words are used throughout Scripture. And the problem is, for example, and I've shared this before, you look at Strong's Concordance, which is a wonderful tool. You get that number so that you make sure that you're, you're doing the research on that same word because sometimes words... Are, are translated very similarly, sometimes identically, but they're different biblical words. And therefore, we need to make sure, and Strong's number will do this for you, that you're researching the same word throughout Scripture. And then you see how that word is used in various locations in the Bible and various usages, so you have a right understanding. See, when you just go to Strong's Concordance and you look at the meaning of that word, what they give you is simply definitions based upon how it's been translated. And and oftentimes, how someone translates it is not accurate. And therefore, we need to do our own work. So give thanks to him and bless his name, meaning bless his character. Well, we've come to the last verse of this short psalm. Look at verse 5. For good is the Lord. Now, word order is important. The fact that it says, for good is the Lord, tells us something. That good is being emphasized. And good is in regard to the will of God. God, by his nature, is going to be faithful to his character and his will. His will is is governed by his character and his character is going to, to manifest itself through his will. So we read here, for good is the Lord. Now I received a, an email not too long ago by saying there's a problem with that word Lord because it's related to Baal, that, that false pagan god, Baal. And, and the word Baal can mean uh, husband, it can mean master or Lord, but not in the biblical sense. It is a pagan uh, expression to use Baal as Lord. What we find is that the word Lord, as it's normally translated into English, comes from either one of two words. The word Adon, which is also related to Adonai, which means master, or ruler, or Lord. It's a word of power, almighty. Or the word Yudhe Vavhe, which simply speaks the term Lord, speaks of one who is is of an authority, one of a position, one that demands respects and allegiance. So there's nothing wrong with the word Lord when we we apply it correctly with the right biblical definition. Secondly, look at the text again. It says, For good is the Lord, forever is His grace. Chasdo. And again, this is a very important word, grace. 
Hebrew chesed. And we find here that, that grace is going to be related to his truth. And his truth is also going to be manifested in his will. I've shared many times that the grace of God, yes, it saves us. We're saved by grace, the scripture says, but the grace of God is going to work in our life, not only to save us, but to compel us and conform us to individuals that are committed to the will of God. So you receive grace, grace saves you. And that same grace is going to bring you to a commitment to the will of God. And that means to obedience. Look again, forever. And that word forever is a kingdom word. So for the kingdom is his grace. You receive grace in order that you might do kingdom work. And then it says, ve ador ve dor unto generation and generation that of course is is parallel to leolam forever generation to generation forever it's speaking about the abundance of time and what's the last word imunato imunato is his faith imuna is related to truth and we see something when we look at this and we are practicing the laws of hebrew poetry what is parallel with his grace well, we see that. Imunato, his truth. And again, the grace of God works in order to manifest in our life a commitment to the truth of God. That word imuna is also the word faith. And it's why I tell you that faith and truth are inherently related. You're not walking in faith if you're not walking in the truth of God. So over and over and over in this psalm of thanksgiving we see that those who are going to give thanks to god and praise him they are recipients of his kingdom grace when it says leolam chasdo forever is his grace we can translate it for the kingdom is his grace he supplies grace so that we can live according to kingdom truth and that word imuna faith imunato his faith is rooted in his truth it is only when we are operating in the truth of god are we really going to be individuals that are living out the kingdom call the kingdom purposes so a short psalm just five verses but what a majestic psalm one that gives us so much simple truth in order to apply to our life so that we can be conformed and we can become more and more and more like him because that is foundationally the call that every believer has in their life to be like him we know ultimately when we receive that new body that kingdom body at the time of our blessed hope the rapture we are going to be made by him this is him finishing the good work that he has began he is going to complete it and we are going to be like yeshua again not god not divine but we're going to be like him in commitment and in character and in purpose that is our call as the people of god i'll close with that until next week shalom from israel Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. Thank you.